Today we're creating a still life with plants, inspired by artist Jonas Wood. Welcome back, my most amazing artist, Miss Brown here, coming to you from my studio in Brooklyn. Today's project is going to be a still life in the style of Jonas Wood. Jonas Wood is an artist who's a living artist. He's born in 1977. He lives in Los Angeles, California with his wife, who's also an artist. She does ceramics, which he often uses in his still life. And her name is Shio Kusaka. So they share a studio, so they're often very inspired by one another. So we are going to be doing a still life in his style, incorporating plants and an object of your choice. So if you have your object ready, that would be great. If you haven't found your object, just walk around. You can either use a toy, I chose a cup. It's up to you. We're going to incorporate one additional object along with the plants. I also added an apple from my imagination. That's up to you. You can also add in things from your imagination. We are going to be working for the demonstration lesson in watercolor, but you can also use marker for this project. I wanted you to be able to have access to something with a bold, bright colors and where you can create flat color versus the colored pencil where you would get a texture. So if you have those supplies, go ahead and get those ready. Uh, we're going to be working with bold, flat shapes. I've also attached to this presentation and I'll be showing them throughout some images of plants and also drawings of plants to give you ideas for different ways and different types of plants that you can use in this project. You're allowed to work either vertical or horizontal if you wanna hold your paper side to side. And I'm also gonna be sharing with you some examples of Jonas Wood's still lives throughout the presentation. So that will also help you to get an idea of perhaps how you wanna design your composition. Um, because we're not gonna be working with things that are directly sitting in front of us, we're gonna either have them printed or on our screen, you're gonna be combining things using your imagination in order to create the scene. So when we talk about designing our scene, we also use a really big word called composition, and that just means how you're laying it out on your paper. Remember, we are creating a sense of space or depth in our project. We want the viewer or whoever's looking at our artwork to think that it really is sitting on a table. So we're creating that three-dimensional space. Remember, that's an element of art, space. So we're creating that on our two-dimensional or flat surface. So let's gather our supplies together and let's get started. The supplies you will need for today's project are pencil, heavyweight paper, ruler, black marker, watercolors or markers, water, paint brushes, and a paper towel. So in order to begin the project, uh, we are learning from the art of Jonas Wood. And one of the things that Jonas Wood includes a lot of in his still lives is plants. So I have gone ahead and made a plants idea sheet on my computer, which you have access to. And I also made a drawing idea sheet to help me get started with drawing some different plants ideas. So if you have live plants in your apartment you can, or your home, you can certainly look at those. But if you don't, I have the idea sheet here to help me. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather my materials, which at this point is just going to be a pencil and a sharpener. And I'm gonna keep my screen open so that I can look at these plants while I'm drawing. So I'm gonna turn the camera now and focus on the drawing, but I wanted you to know that I am working from my photos and I'll put a few of them on the split screen so you can see what I'm gonna be working from. So I'm gonna start out by thinking about adding a horizon line. Even though this is a still life, I can turn my paper horizontal or I can work vertical. That's gonna be completely up to me. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and work vertical for mine. And so I'm gonna put a line for the table. I'm gonna go about one third of the way up. You can go halfway, just depends on how much space. I think I wanna put a couple of tall plants in mine. So again, because I'm working in pencil, I will try to draw a little bit darker so that you can see my pencil lines, but you should draw light until you have it the way you want it. So I'm gonna start out with a cactus plant and I'm thinking about the idea that Jonas Wood really thinks a lot about his planters because he's very inspired by the work of 
his wife. His wife is named Shio Usaka, and she's also an artist, and they share a studio together out in California. They're both living artists, and they share the studio, so they are influenced by one another greatly. So I'm just going to start off with the container that my plant is going to go in. And because this is lower on the page, remember it's gonna be a little bit larger. So then I'm gonna think about these one of these round cactus plants. It's gonna come up. Okay, and I'm noticing already I went through my line there, so I can just go ahead back in and erase that out. And I'm not really, too, too worried because I know I'm going to be coloring this. So I'm going to be either drawing or painting over those areas. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit smudgy. It matters more to me that you see what I'm drawing. So I'm going to have a little one there. And I'm noticing that with the cacti plants or cactus plants, they have these little, little prickly things that come off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those details in and I can finish that up a little bit later. So this is gonna be my main plant. I would like you to try to have at least three objects. You can have more than three, but at least three. Um, one of them is gonna be the toy or the stuffed animal, which I'm gonna get mine in just a minute, I'll show you what I decided to put in mine. And it can just be any object. It doesn't have to be a toy. It doesn't have to be a stuffed animal. That's gonna be completely up to you. But what you might have noticed in the Jonas Wood is that he went ahead and he did a lot of patterning on his containers or his pots that hold the plants because that's one of the things that his wife does on her artwork is she has a lot of patterns on her ceramic vessels. A vessel is just a fancy word for a container. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in those details. I added a pattern, you could do a design, it's up to you. I'm gonna continue on with the little parts of my cactus here, making it look a little bit prickly. And then I think in the background here, I'm actually gonna make a little stand. And I'm working from my imagination, and I'm also inspired by what I saw in Jonas Wood's artwork. And I noticed sometimes he has plants that are up a little bit higher. So this one, because it's in the background, it's gonna be a little on the smaller side. Right? Because it's further away, we're creating that sense of distance and depth. And for this one, I'm going to have a plant called a spider plant. Have you ever seen a spider plant? They have these really fun leaves that droop down. And they usually have a line in the center of them. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in too. And this planter, I'm going to put some stripes, some diagonal stripes for my design. And I can tell it's sitting up on this little table surface here. This plant is sitting on my table that's directly in front of me. So far, I have two objects. Now I'm going to think about going and finding something else to incorporate into my design. Now this could be where you look for your toy. This could be an object that you find around the house. I'll be right back with mine. Okay, so I decided I'm going to use this handmade ceramic mug as the object that I'm going to put into my composition. So I'm going to set this mug on the side and I'm going to hold it and look at it and see how I want to draw it into my design. Remember that one of the things Jonas Woods also does is he tends to make things a little bit on the flat side. So I definitely want this to look like a cup. So I have to think about 
showing that inside of the cup. So when I draw a stretched out circle like this, that's called an ellipse. I'm gonna go ahead and put the handle. And notice the handle is thicker. And there I have my object. So now I've met the requirements of the project. I have three objects, including my one that I selected myself and two that are plants, but I still think it needs something. I feel like these are really like on the same place. So I think I'm gonna actually draw a little apple sitting in the front of this planter. So I don't have an apple to look at. So I'm gonna make the apple out of my mind or if I want, I could go online and look up a picture of an apple or if I wanna go to the kitchen and look for an apple, maybe I have one in my apartment. If not, I kind of know in my mind what an apple looks like. And I'm going to even have a little stem on my apple. This apple is going to move right in the front of my design. So I have to finish off adding in all my details and we'll come right back. So I've gone ahead and I've penciled in my entire design. I even added a background. I did some vertical stripes in the background. I have my still life really planned out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look back at some of the Jonas Woods inspiration for my color choices. So you may have noticed when you looked at Jonas Wood's artwork that he does not really use a black outline. However, to make it easier for you to see, I am gonna go ahead and do a black outline before I start painting. That way you'll be able to see the shapes that I'm using a little bit more clearly. So you can choose to do a black outline, you do not have to. You can also use marker for this project. Either one will work, watercolor or marker. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit to do my outlining and then I'll see you right back. Okay, so I went ahead and finished my outlining and remember again I said you're allowed to outline if you want, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. I have a few different size brushes. I am going to demonstrate with watercolor for this project, but again, remember you can use any coloring material that has bold, bright colors. I would recommend either marker or watercolor for this. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with some greens. Remember with watercolor, you need to activate it by wetting it. I noticed in the Jonas Woods examples that I looked at, that he uses a lot of different shades of green in his plants. So with watercolor, I know that I can get that effect by letting my watercolor dry and then overlapping some darker shades. So right now I'm gonna go where I see lighter colors and I can look at the examples of the different plants or I can also use my imagination to create the shades of green that I want. Remember, if I have more water added to my paint, I'm going to get a lighter shade. If there's less water in the paint, it's going to come out darker. And I can also do some mixing over here. You can have a little mixing area. So if I add in a little bit of brown, make sure you clean your brush in between. I can get a little bit different shade of green here. A little bit more of an army green. Go back into my light green, and if I do it while it's still wet, my colors will blend together. And you can do this a little bit with marker as well. Take your time painting. 
I am working on a little bit heavier weight paper for watercolor, so if you're doing watercolor, copy paper probably is not the best choice. Marker, obviously copy paper would be fine. Uh, but if you're gonna be using some water, I would recommend that you use a little bit heavier paper. Oh, that got a little too brown for my liking, so I'm just gonna add some green right in while it's still wet. What do you think will happen if I put black in with my green? Now, black is a very dark color, right? Let's see if I mix some black over here with my green. Oh, wow. That gives me an even darker green. So that's going to look really nice behind. You can kind of vary the different greens that you use. And I'm using a pretty small brush right now. You wanna try and pick the right size for the job. And obviously I'm focusing on one object at a time. That's gonna help me to make sure that I don't have any smudges. I'm also noticing that my hand is going towards some of that wet paint. So I'm actually gonna turn my composition around so that I can reach this little cactus bud over here without damaging the other ones. Now again, I'm gonna go back in, add some little bit of darker on the edges here. Okay, and right now, remember, all my paint is wet, so it's blending together. If I don't want it to blend, I need to wait until it's dry. That's the trick with watercolor. And it takes a few minutes to dry. All right, so I'm gonna continue on with my greens while I'm in the realm of greens. And for my spider plant, I'm gonna mix a bluish green, actually. So more of a turquoise color. So I'm mixing my turquoise, depending on what colors you have, even if you only have an eight color set, you can still achieve a wide range of colors. I'm just following the shape of the leaves on my little spider plant over here. Again, I'm not worrying too much if my watercolor paint goes a little bit outside of my leaves because I know I'm going to be putting a background in. So it's totally okay. And notice I moved to something that's on the other side of my page. That's also helping me to make sure that my arm isn't going through. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white of the paper showing. I kind of like that effect. You can decide what works for you. Notice here, I did not go straight onto this because I was afraid if I touched wet on wet, then my green would blend into my pot. So I'm gonna keep going to areas that are further apart from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my apple next and I'm gonna make it a red apple. I actually don't really like to eat red apples. I like green apples even better, but I think the red will be nice to add another pop of color over here. Because remember, you might have noticed in some of the Jonas Woods examples, he even has red and purple plants and flowering plants. So I'm actually thinking I might add some flowers onto my cactus in the end. Maybe it's gonna be a flowering cactus. I'm gonna add a little red orange on this side. Give it a little shading. If you think back to the Georgia O'Keeffe project. Okay, so I added in a little bit of the reddish orange here, and I'm just gonna add a little more of that on this side to give a little effect there. Grab my small, small brush. My small brush. And let's see that brown. If you have really small parts, you can also look at uh, using a small marker in combination with that. Now, I'm looking at my cup that I put in as my object, whether you used a stuffed animal or a toy. You can look at the colors of the actual object, or if you want to change the colors, that's okay too. I'm going to see if I can actually mix that sort of purpley blue that I'm seeing. It's kind of a periwinkle color. You might be able to get that. Let's see if I can. Using some of 
some turquoise. Ooh, okay, maybe a little bit more blue in there. because I don't want to smudge. But I'm pretty happy with the way that looks on this tie-dye. It's kind of cool. Okay, I'm gonna continue on painting with this and I'll see you back here in a moment. completely dry and now I'm going back in with a little bit of marker into this spider plant that I made because I think I told you in the beginning that spider plants have these amazing lines and I really felt like with my marker I can get those lines to look even more interesting than I could with the paintbrush so I let it dry and I went back in and added that with my marker now, you can see I did do the little tiny flowers on the cactus with paint, but I could have also done those with marker. And I think I'm gonna actually go in with my pink marker and go over those a little bit to make some of them stand out a little bit more. So I can make them a little bit darker now that they're dry with the paint. I can add in a few more if I see that I wanna put some more in. So you can really use your mixed materials on this. I'm thinking I even might want to go in and add some lines here. And I feel like it's pretty much done. I hope you really enjoyed the Jonas Wood Still Life Project today. I know I had so much fun learning all about all the different types of plants I could use and incorporating an object of my choice. I'm so curious to see what objects you picked, how you designed your background, and even how you chose to mold your paper. Did you use vertical or did you use horizontal? I'm so curious to see how you designed your Jonas Wood inspired still life. Have a great rest of your day. We miss you and we'll see you really soon. Bye bye.